the aim of the study really was to try and find some treatments that might reduce the risk of heart attacks and strokes. We have a lot of good treatments at the moment, including statins, uh, which lower the bad cholesterol. And so what we're interested in is finding new treatments that we can add in on top of statins, which might produce further benefit. The study was a large randomized trial. We took people who'd already had some problems such as either a heart attack or a stroke or they had problems with circulation in their legs um, and about a third of them also had diabetes um, which we know commonly occurs with those other conditions. We studied niacin because it has good effects on the cholesterol. It both lowers the bad cholesterol and increases the good cholesterol. It's been around and used to treat cholesterol for about 50 years, but the older preparations nearly always caused flushing. Now, what do we mean by flushing? We mean uh, a redness in the face and a feeling of hotness in the body and a, a rather unpleasant sensation. Uh, so we now have a drug uh, called Laropoprant, which specifically suppresses that flushing due to niacin and the laropoprant and the niacin have been combined in a single tablet to try and make the niacin better tolerated and so this new combination product is what allowed us to do the study in a large number of people and to test the effects of niacin in the current era. So we took 25,000 people with those conditions from around the world um, and half of them were given uh, the niacin laropoprant combination and half of them were given a dummy version. All the patients in the study took background simvastatin and uh, we gave that at a dose of 40 milligrams daily and if that was sufficient to bring their cholesterol down to an acceptable level then they just stayed on the simvastatin 40. If their cholesterols were still a bit higher than we felt was ideal, then they took simvastatin 40 plus ezetimibe 10 milligrams, and that was together in a single tablet, and that was their background therapy. So everybody got good cholesterol lowering as background therapy. When we looked at the numbers of people in the two groups, those who got the niacin combination versus the dummy group, there were very similar numbers in the two groups. So we weren't able to show any worthwhile benefits of this niacin combination on recurrent heart attacks and strokes in this study. The results were very clear. Because the study was very large, we had over 25,000 people taking part and they were followed for nearly four years. That gives us a very reliable answer to the question. There were just as many uh, people who suffered a heart attack or stroke or needed revascularization among the people who took the niacin as among the people who took the dummy drug. So although we didn't find any worthwhile benefits from the niacin, we did find an increase in the risk of side effects. And these were serious side effects that affected a variety of different body systems. The main side effects that we found were an increased risk of tummy problems, what we call gastrointestinal problems, an increased risk of skin problems, particularly rashes and itching, um, an increased risk of problems with diabetes. And there were two parts to that. There was an increase in diabetic complications among people with diabetes, and also an increased risk of developing diabetes if you didn't have it already. And then we also saw an increased risk of bleeding and an increased risk of infections. Now it had been known before that niacin could affect the sugar control in the blood, but it hadn't been clear that it really did increase the risk of developing diabetes. But these results are absolutely clear that uh, they were not only worsening diabetic complications, but also causing diabetes in people who didn't previously have it. We tested a combination drug, but the evidence from previous studies would suggest that these side effects are largely attributable to the niacin. We know from earlier studies that gastrointestinal problems, skin problems, um, and diabetes-related uh, problems have all been well recognized with niacin. 
for the bleeding and the infection. There are clues in the earlier studies that these are also related to niacin, but obviously we can never be absolutely sure. Well, as a result of the study findings, um, the company who make this particular combination of the niacin plus the liropoprant, the anti-flushing agent, have decided that, uh, that it will no longer be available and so it's been suspended from the market. It is just as important to find out that drugs don't work and are not producing the benefits that we hope that they might have as finding out if they, they do work. Um, obviously, we would have liked it if we'd been able to show benefits for our patients here, but it was very important to find out whether or not these treatments should be being used widely, and our results suggest that they probably should not be. There are other preparations of niacin available for prescription, um, and I think that doctors need to look at our results and consider whether or not they feel it's appropriate to continue using uh, Ni those niacin preparations for uh, prevention of heart attacks and strokes and that's the main reason that they're being used at the moment um, because we've clearly shown that there's no worthwhile benefits when used uh, on top of effective statin-based treatment and there are significant harms as a result of uh, giving the niacin and I think people need to be aware of that. It is very important that we are able to continue doing studies like this and we are enormously grateful to participants from around the world who were prepared to go into this study. These tablets were not easy to take, they were, they were quite large, sometimes quite difficult to swallow and patients took them regularly, sometimes for four or five years and we are enormously grateful to them for that. I'd like to thank particularly the doctors, the nurses, the administrative staff and all the people who have helped to make this study a, a valuable contribution to medical science. So thank you very much.